Thank you for joining us today. Um, can you briefly introduce yourself and your company to the viewers, please? Sure. My name is Samson Mo. I'm the CEO of Gen3 and Pixelmatic. Mm -hmm. Pixelmatic is a game development studio working on Infinite Fleet, and Gen3 is a Bitcoin technology company working on nation state adoption. Cool. Um, what are the key advantages of STOs compared to traditional securities offerings these days? I think the key to STOs is that you have a bearer instrument. Oh, you can't do We need to okay. yeah, refill it. <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> that random announcement. <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> Is our other yeah. interview live yet? Uh, we're still doing it. Oh. You mean the, yeah. yeah. So this one is later, after that one? Yeah. Uh. They're still like translating. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, they have to translate it. Yeah, they have to translate that into Korean. Right. They're working on it. Let's start with it, right? Can we start from the beginning? Sorry. Yeah. Everything or just <laughs> yeah the from the beginning. Inter introduction. Yeah, introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 가겠습니다. Hello and thank you for your time for today's interview. Can you briefly introduce yourself and your company to the viewers? Sure. My name is Samson Mo. I'm the CEO of Jan3 and the CEO of Pixelmatic. Jan3 is a Bitcoin technology company working on nation-state Bitcoin adoption and Pixelmatic is the studio behind Infinite Fleet. Cool. Um, can you share your thoughts on the adoption of STOs by traditional financial institutions? Yes, I think the adoption is still slow. slow. But okay. we should see it picking up steam, mm. I think, this year. The key catalyst is mm. that we need a very large scale STO offering mm -hmm. and capital raise that kicks things off. And I believe sovereign debt tokenized sovereign debt, mm -hmm. which is an STO, yeah. could be that catalyst, like okay. the Bitcoin bonds mm. of El Salvador. Then which country is most active in STO industry? I would say it's quite spread right now, okay. evenly spread. So there's, there's no leading country? Maybe Korea. Really? But, uh, <laughs> definitely, there's yeah. this conference in Korea, which okay. is, um, I think, a very good starting point. Mm -hmm. There are a number of STO uh, companies. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are based in the US. Okay. Uh, like INX, yeah. uh, Republic, mm -hmm. and then in Europe you have Stoker, and then there's also Bitfinex Securities, mm -hmm. which is kind of global, yeah. and they are also pushing hard for STOs as mm -hmm. well. So I think it's just picking up steam. Mm -hmm. The challenges for STOs is that there's no really good example of a large capital raise yeah. yet. And the liquidity mm -hmm. on the trading venues is not that high yet. Mm -hmm. So again, we just need the catalyst to kick okay. off the market. As you mentioned, Korea for the first country. What opportunities do you see for STOs in the Korea market then? Well, I think there are a lot of interesting things that can become tokenized equities in Korea. Okay. There's a lot of very prominent Korean companies. Mm -hmm. And I think if you could pair the tokenized offerings with something like a Bitcoin strategy, mm. like say MicroStrategy has yeah. been doing their corporate Bitcoin acquisition mm -hmm. strategy. If you could do that with say Samsung, Mm. That would be a totally different, different ball game, right? Mm. Because the scale is much higher. Yeah. Uh, but I think we have to get there step by step. Yeah. Because not every company sees the value of Bitcoin mm. as a reserve asset yet. True. But I think pairing the two things, security tokens mm -hmm. and Bitcoin on balance sheet, mm -hmm. could be a very strong driver of economic growth. Mm. But some people are still don't believe in the true value about Bitcoin or STO. What are the key advantages of STOs compared to traditional security offerings? Well, I think the promise is that you have a bearer asset. Mm. So you restore balance to equity. So yeah. originally stocks were paper certificates, where if I have the certificate, mm. I have the stock. And with the evolution of things becoming digital, it's largely removed. But I think with security tokens, you have the potential where I can keep the security token in my wallet. I can trade peer to peer yeah. um, with the whitelist. Mm. So if you're an investor, I'm an investor, mm. then we can trade back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one key element. So the it's other more convenience? It's bearer. Okay. So you make it so that 
Mm. People cannot make it short anymore. Yeah. You have to have the asset. Mm. I think that solves one problem. All right. The other key benefit is that you have potential for a global 24/7 marketplace, mm -hmm. which mm. I believe is not excusable at this point. The technology is there; it's just the willingness to operate yeah. that market. And there is a strong benefit to that because if you look at Bitcoin, mm -hmm. Bitcoin is 15 years old. Yeah. But it has the equivalent of 80 years of trading history oh. because it is 24/7, 365. Wow. And I believe tokenized equities can also stimulate economic growth mm. by increasing that trading duration that oh, they okay. could have. Mm, I see. Then, as you mentioned about your STO company, uh, can you provide an example of a successful STO that your company has facilitated? So we don't facilitate. Um, oh, okay. We uh, we did one, and we worked mm -hmm. with other companies to facilitate our STO offering. Oh. So for Infinite Fleet, we've raised uh, 7.9 million publicly to mm -hmm. date. There's more that we haven't announced yet. Okay. But uh, we work with Stoker and also Bitfinex Securities. Mm -hmm. uh, again, they're very bullish on tokenizing uh, assets. But um, Stoker works out of Luxembourg, so they helped us create the tokenization vehicle, mm -hmm. investor management, whitelisting, and compliance. And then Bitfinex Securities is a secondary tra trading platform that we hope to list on. Mm -hmm. But I think these venues are very well primed and they are integrated with the Liquid Network to facilitate the tokenization and trading. Cool. Then in your opinion, what does future hold for the STO market in the next 5 to 10 years? I think most stocks will be tokenized within the 5 to 10 year mark. Mm -hmm. Either companies will do the tokenization themselves yeah. or you'll have third parties wrapping them oh, okay. as a tokenization vehicle. Mm. So for example, MicroStrategy is already tokenized on Liquid. Mm. It's called CMSTR oh, okay. and it's issued by Stoker as well. So you can oh. already trade MicroStrategy 24-7 wow. mm. if you wanted to. But I think we just need that catalyst, a large issuance. And I believe tokenizing sovereign debt is probably that catalyst because there's just so much debt out there. Mm -hmm. and it's also a very good instrument to tokenize because yep. it's unlikely to fail or default. Mm. Cool. Then for the last question, is there any advice you'd give to investors or um, companies who are interested in STO industry? I would say look at the underlying technology. There's a lot of tokenization on different blockchains, but I think with a proliferation of many blockchains, you mm -hmm. have risk at the base level of those technologies. And as we've seen in the past, the SEC has deemed some cryptocurrencies to be securities because they had an ICO. So look for things that are clearly not securities. Mm. Again, I would recommend okay. the Liquid Network because mm. it is clearly not a security offering yeah. and you can issue securities on that base layer. But again, another part is um, looking at companies that are proceeding with tokenization mm -hmm. that have a Bitcoin component because oh. we've seen that Bitcoin supercharges these yeah. offerings. And it'll be the, it is the case for MicroStrategy, mm -hmm. and it will be the case for, say, Bitcoin bonds from El Salvador. Mm, cool. Okay, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us yeah. today. Thank you for your thank time. You. Thank you.